Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, this is one of the last two videos that's going to be all about lists, and these are just examples. So nothing new in these, uh, though some of the topics might be a bit complex. So let's go ahead and jump in. We're going to do two examples in this one. Uh, the first one is going to be a little program that keeps track of what we say. So I'm going to make a list and I'm going to call it chat text looks like this and it's gonna be a very simple program it's just gonna say while true and this is called a game kind of a loop here a program or game loop uh, because it's just gonna keep looping until I exit so I need in order to exit I need to tell the user how I want to exit okay so in order to do this so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say uh, text equals input um, enter your thoughts and then I'm gonna put uh, type I'll just put X to exit say enter X to exit okay and all we're gonna do is ask the user for their thoughts and every time the user enters something we're either gonna put it inside of our chat text or we're going to exit. So I first I need to test for the exit. It's probably the most important thing. So if text is equal to x or text is equal to x, then break. Okay, so this is, I'm being nice here. I'm letting the user actually put it in a capital or lowercase and then this break will jump me out of the loop. Otherwise, and actually in this case I don't really need that, I'm just going to say chat text dot append text. Okay. And this, at this point, you're just going to, the loop is going to keep going, and when you're done, you're going to print out the chat text. Okay, we'll, we'll add some stuff uh, here in just a minute. And let's go ahead and run this. Oh, actually, I need to control Alt B. I want to run it in here. So I'm going to say, I'm feeling great today. Hey, okay. it's a Tuesday, and we just had a typhoon. And it's true, we did just a. Actually, we're in the middle of a typhoon right now. Uh, and let's say now I'm tired, so I type exit, and I exit, and then it prints out my chat and you notice it just prints it out as an array so it prints out what I wrote but it prints out in an array maybe we don't want that maybe we want it to print out everything uh, in a much more orderly fashion so let's say I'm gonna go for line in chat text print line okay and let's go ahead and run it again I'm gonna get rid of this uh, old one here. And I'm gonna say something, something. Uh, uh, barely managed to crawl out of bed this morning. Okay, and then uh, capital X to exit. And now it does this, it prints out things on both lines. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Uh, let's say that I wanted to add the line numbers so there's a line number kind of like here. See, there's line numbers here. So let's say I wanted to run the line, put the line numbers there. I could then change this to for i in range 0 to length dot chat text. And then I can do uh, chat text i. And then I'm going to add this over here. So this is going to be string i plus and let's go ahead and put the spaces like that and run it again. So it's Tuesday, lots of rain. I want to go out and play, but I can't. And then exit. Okay. And then we get this nice print out here. All right. So. This illustrates a way to save information that the user is inputting. It also shows you a way to make an infinite loop 
that can be exited by using a key that you determine. Okay, so in this case, this is kind of a standard uh, looping procedure. Uh, later on, I'm going to do a project uh, in the project section where I actually create a game which is called a multi-user dungeon which is like a called a mud and it just gives you text and you walk around and it tells you tells you stuff so we'll show you how to do that later uh, in the project section but actually you have almost the ability to do it now the only thing you're really gonna need is to be able to open and files and save files that's it and then you could actually do it using this type of code okay uh, let's go ahead and do the next example. So this was a quick example, showed you a loop, showed you how to put stuff in. Uh, let's do an example with prime numbers. So I'm gonna say primes. And if you don't remember, primes are two, three, oops, not five, uh, seven, nine, not nine, 13, okay, and so on. So a prime number is a number that's divisible by one in itself. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna loop through a hundred numbers or close to a hundred numbers I'm actually gonna say for num in range 2 to 100 and for each of these numbers I'm gonna test it against a whole bunch of other numbers up to that number and see if they're divisible so for example let's say I say num is equal to 7 I need to test uh, so take so take 7 and test if divisible by 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. I don't need to test 7 and I don't need to test 1 because I know that it's divisible by those. But if 7 is divisible by any of these other numbers, then in that case, it's not a prime number because prime numbers only have two factors, 1 and itself. So I need to now take this num here, this variable num, and divide it by a whole bunch of other numbers. So I'm going to say is uh, divide by in the range of 2 to num. Okay. And then I'm going to test if num modulus divide by is equal to 0. Okay, so these are the three basic lines and we're going to put some other variables in here that helps us keep track of things. But for right now, this is all you really need. So if we get through, if, if this number here is divisible by 2 up to that number and you get 0, okay, so if it's divisible by that number, then you're going to put it in, not in the array, because if it's divisible by uh, any other number, it gets 0, then you don't want it in the array. Otherwise, you do want it in the array. Okay, so we need to keep track of how many times this has been true. So, for example, as I went back to this example here, let's say num is equal to 7. In this case, uh, divide by is going to be equal to uh, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And it's going to test each one modulus. And only if the number is evenly divisible by it, will this equal zero. Otherwise, it won't equal zero. Otherwise, it will it will be one or two or three or four. For example, two mod seven is one, and three mod uh, seven is one, and four mod seven is three, and five is two, and six is one. So none of those is zero, which means that this will never be true for seven. So I only want, in order, I only want to count by those that are divisible by it. So I'm going to make a variable in here called div count, which each time I get a new number, I'm going to reset to zero, and then I'm going to count how many times that number is divisible by something. So if it's divisible by something, I say div count plus equals one. So it counts how many times it's divisible by that particular number. So by the time this loop is done, if that number so if div count is still equal to zero, that means nothing from nothing here went into that number. And if nothing went into that number, that means that it is a prime number. So then I can append it. And then when I'm done, I can print out my list of primes. So if I run this, 
you notice I get all the prime numbers up to 100. And the nice thing is, is I can change this. Say I want all the prime numbers up to 500. I can go ahead and do that. Get all the prime numbers up to 500. You notice though, as you start running this, it's going to get a little slower each time. So 100 is in one seconds. 1,000 is in 0.1 seconds. But oddly, 10,000 do, 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 is going to take a little bit longer. So it should take about 10 seconds. Yep, there you go, about 8.7 seconds in order to find all the prime numbers up to 10,000. So if I made this 100,000, we're going to be sitting here a while. I don't want to do that. But if you want to, let it run. Uh, this is a very inefficient way of finding prime numbers. There's much better ways of finding prime numbers, and we will look at those later on. Uh, but for now, this is one way that you can find a whole list of prime numbers. And in here, you can actually find different ways to make this more efficient. Uh, you could use list comprehensions for some things. Uh, you could shorten this code a little bit. Uh, but I'll leave that up to you. I just wanted to show you an example of storing prime numbers in a list. Okay. So there you go. You got your list of prime numbers. Now, you might want to do something with these prime numbers later which is why you would want to save them in a list. Uh, otherwise, you know, it's just, just one way to store something. Okay, so uh, the next video for list, I'll do a couple more examples using list. And this time I'll talk more about like splicing and other stuff like that. Uh, but for this one, I just wanted to show you two uses for storing information. All right, I uh, look forward to seeing you in the next video. If you have any questions, if you have any comments, if you want to tell me this is such a stupid way of doing prime numbers, why would you show anybody this? Feel free. I'm just going to answer you that it's an example. So, all right. Uh, let's talk to you soon and uh, keep learning, I suppose. All right.